I've been thinking about you. And there ain't no doubt about it. I'm in love. Hey homies, it's Carrie, your horticulture homegirl, and I am back with another video. I have also decided that since the cookouts and kickbacks and festivals have been canceled, y'all are about to get these classics for the culture at the start of every single video. You can thank me later. So today I am going to give you all my number one tip, rule, policy for loving your plants without loving them to death. And that is drainage, drainage, drainage. We are going to talk about the importance of well-draining pots, well-draining soil, and how all of that ties into not overwatering and potentially killing your plants. So for starters, we are going to talk about watering. I understand that watering just feels good. I love watering my plants. It makes me feel like I'm giving them the TLC and love that they need and deserve. However, what I have noticed with my own plants and from talking to friends and family, uh, family members and those who come to me for advice, the most common issue is overwatering, which leads to edema, which means that there is so much water within the cell, um, the cells of the plants that the cell walls begin to burst and you'll notice um, little dark spots, which are just the, the staining or the scar tissue of the cell wall. So that seems to be the biggest issue for when anyone comes to me and has any sort of problems with their plants. The number one issue is overwatering. So what does overwatering mean? Well, a lot of people think that overwatering means the frequency in which you water, which is potentially true. Um, I know for many, a watering schedule seems like the best plan. However, it goes back to researching your plants. Our plants originated in all different parts of the world, some in the desert, some in the tropics. So that's going to heavily dictate their water needs. So a once a week watering schedule is not going to necessarily be appropriate for your succulents and cacti. However, a more frequent watering schedule will definitely be more appropriate if you have larger, fuller and more tropical plants. Another big factor that goes into overwatering is the drainage capabilities. And there are two factors that lead, that contribute rather, to how well your plants can drain and wick the moisture away from their roots so that they don't have wet feet, which just means their roots are constantly sitting in water. Factor one is the soil. I know that the go-to is potting soil. However, as I progress in my own plant journey, I'm slowly pulling away from potting soil altogether. Uh, currently, I mix my make my own potting mix, which is very, very little organic potting soil, tons of cactus mix, and a very heavy-handed amount of perlite. And here's why. In nature, the soil that plants grow in is full of all kinds of sediment. So you have rocks, sand, um, all kind of organic broken down material. You also have natural bacteria, insects, earthworms, all that good stuff that are constantly moving through the soil, creating air pockets. And you also have moving air. In nature, the wind blows. So in your home, because you don't necessarily have all of those factors, it's really important to choose a soil that most closely mimics that environment. And I've noticed that that is absolutely cactus soil or cactus mix rather. Cactus mix, which is, you can buy tons of brands, um, black gold I'm currently using and I really enjoy it. That's not a sponsor. I just really like that brand. And what cactus mix consists of is of course a, a soil medium and you know, all of the added nutrients and sometimes even um, worm castings or things like that, which is just worm poop. But also, Lots of organic material like coconut husks, 
um, and all kinds of sticks and branches. There's also sand incorporated into the mix and you'll notice it's just very light and fluffy. If you hold a handful of cactus mix and a handful of traditional potting soil, you're going to feel that the potting soil is, is a lot more dense which means that it is going to hold more moisture for longer, where that cactus mix is going to allow for a lot more drainage and oxygen to flow through, which is so important because we're not living outside in a wind tunnel, you know? So because we don't have those factors, it's important to use soil that more closely mimics that. So I love cactus mix for that reason and also perlite. perlite or you can even use um, horticultural charcoal mimics that those rocks and sediments, even seashells that break up the soil naturally in when our plants are out in nature in their in their natural happy habitat. So soil is so important. I strongly recommend mixing your own potting soil as in general in mixing your own potting mix because I have seen that potting soil in general is just entirely too dense and it immediately leads to root rot. So we have watering frequency. You're gonna cut back on how much you're watering and really getting to know what your individual plants need based on their natural habitat. Potting mix, which means mixing your own or even using just cactus mix and you might have to water a little more often and that's okay and that's a maybe. I've noticed that using cactus mix and lots of perlite doesn't necessarily mean that I'm watering more often. It just means that my plants are a lot happier and healthier. And the final factor that goes into drainage is the type of pot. Um, I will use this beautiful alocasia here. This is the nursery pot that this plant came in, okay? And you see nursery pots are wonderful. Please don't dump all over the floor. Nursery pots are wonderful because they are chock full of holes. They often even have holes on the side and all on the bottom. This means that as the water is going in, the roots are gonna soak up what they need and then the water has a safe place to escape. It also means that your plant is getting aeration from all sides. So it's getting oxygen from the top, but it's also getting oxygen through the sides of the plant or the bottom, um, even if you use a table like this. Again, my money trees in a big nursery pot, I keep those and it's on a table with some holes. So it's getting oxygen from all direction and that's gonna significantly reduce the likelihood of your plants having root rot or being over watered. And um, another little tip as far as watering, I personally love watering my plants in the shower. For a while, I started doing the watering with a watering can or a jug, um, and I just noticed my plants were getting these like pots, these pockets of sogginess. No matter how much I turned or twisted the pot, it was just getting these soggy pockets that were not draining properly. However, when I take my plants in the shower, they get evenly watered, they get a nice rinse and wash of the leaves, which plants love, and it also helps with managing pests. Um, in nature, in a rainforest, when it's constantly watering, it's going to wash away any potential dangerous pets. So a nice even downpour, I just take down the, the hose and spray it. And if you don't have a detachable hose, put on your swimsuit and you can just stand in there and manually turn it, making sure that it's getting um, nice and evenly drenched and covered. And also you can control the distance between the shower head and the plant so that they're not getting beat up on or damaged. Um, in the shower, I use lukewarm water. Again, we're mimicking nature. Our homes have deficits naturally, but the closer we can get to mimicking that natural habitat, the healthier our plants are gonna be. So again, frequency of watering. I do not recommend a watering schedule at all. Get to know each one of your plants individually and get to know their needs. Also, the finger test. Feel around in the soil. If it feels soggy and spongy, leave it alone. Your plants are not going to suffer from being slightly underwatered. However, they will suffer from being overwatered. So frequency well-draining soil, 
well draining pots. Nursery pots are fabulous and your friend. And then finally, if you choose, I highly recommend sticking them in the shower and kind of pulling away from the constant dumping of water from a water jug or watering can. So that's my little tip for loving your plants for many, many years to, go, to come without loving them to death. And also one more thing before I sign off for the day, I want to extend a very warm and loving thank you for my wonderful friend Al who designed that awesome logo and title page that you all saw at the beginning of this video. So thank you so much Al, I really do love it. And for all of you, until next time, be well and I love you all very much. Bye.